so you want to learn a little logic the series. Part 2, Soundness and Validity. In this screencast, we will introduce the concepts of a sound argument and valid reasoning. Sound arguments. In the part one of this series, we described an argument as a form of discourse with some premises and a conclusion. The question inevitably arises, what makes a good argument different from a bad argument? Logic has a very firm answer to this question. A good argument is an argument that, one, has premises that are actually true in the real world, and two, has reasoning that is valid. That's it. And any argument that does not meet these two criteria is a bad argument. Now, in the terminology used by logicians, we do not talk about good and bad arguments, but rather sound and unsound arguments. Let's look at the argument we made reference to in our first screencast. All humans are mortal, Socrates is human, therefore Socrates is mortal. Is this a sound argument? It is if we can say, first, that the premises are actually true in the real world, and second, that the reasoning is valid. Looking at, first, the premises being true in the real world, it is the case that the premises are actually true, that is, that all humans are mortal, and the Socrates is human. So, the first criterion is met. Looking at the second, is it the case that the reasoning is valid? To know the answer to this question, we need to know what is meant by valid. You may think that you know what this means, but in the study of logic, this word has a very specific meaning. Validity. To some extent, one can think of the study of logic as the study of validity. Logicians are very concerned with it. But what then is validity? The standard definition is as follows. An argument is valid, if and only if there is no possible situation in which the premises are true and the conclusion false. In other words, for an argument to be valid, the conclusion cannot fail to be true if the premises are true. To illustrate what we mean, let's return to our argument about Socrates. Is it possible for the premises, all humans are mortal, Socrates is human, to be true, and for the conclusion, Socrates is mortal, to be false? No. If those premises are true, then the conclusion must be true. You might ask yourself, why does this matter, since we already know the premises and the conclusion of this argument are actually true in the real world? The answer to this is that the notion of validity allows us to judge whether a conclusion follows from the premises, regardless of the truth of those claims. And this helps us see weakness in someone's reasoning, and in our own, of course, very quickly. Take the following example. If the moon is made of green cheese, it is tasty. The moon is made of green cheese, therefore it is tasty. Of course, the moon is not actually made of green cheese. But if we are evaluating just validity, not soundness, of an argument, we need to ask ourselves, does the conclusion follow from the premises? Yes, it does. Even though the conclusion is false, the moon is tasty, the conclusion does follow from the premises. So what we have here is a distinction between the statements that are true on the one hand and statements that follow from other statements on the other. A statement being true and a statement following from other statements are two different things. Consider these examples. If it's raining, then it's cloudy. It's raining, therefore it's cloudy. And only citizens can vote. Anna is a citizen, therefore Anna can vote. Consider whether these arguments are any good, and try to figure out whether they are any good before proceeding in this screencast. Remember, for an argument to be good, or sound, the premises must be true in the real world, and the conclusion cannot fail to be true if the premises are true. It turns out that the first example is unsound. The reasoning itself is valid, that is, if the premises are true, the conclusion must be true. But the first premise is not actually true. In many cases, clouds are present when it's raining. 
but sun showers, and often rainbows, have rain with no clouds. Therefore, the argument is unsound. That is, it's not true that if it's raining, then it's cloudy, in all cases. Therefore, it is not a good argument. The second example is also unsound. In this case, the argument is unsound because the reasoning is invalid. Even if Anna is a citizen in a country where only citizens can vote, Anna could be too young to vote, or have lost her voting rights for some reason. So even if the premises in the argument are true, only citizens can vote, Anna is a citizen, the conclusion, Anna can vote, does not necessarily follow. The reasoning is therefore not valid, making the argument unsound. In summary, for this screencast, we have introduced the concepts of a sound argument and a valid reasoning. The main work of logic is to help you determine whether an argument is valid. So, in the next installment of this series, we'll learn a simple test that helps us spot invalid arguments.